In this video I'm going to show you how I upgraded my X-Carve CNC spindle from this to this. I started with making a clamping bracket for the new spindle. The material therefore is 25mm thick polyethylene that I got as a waste piece from a local manufacturer for free. With the current spindle I cut out the shape but only a third of the way through. Otherwise it would take it forever to complete the job. Notice the effective dust collection. After cutting the piece free I completed the shape with a flush trim router bit. Now here's the bracket so far and at the moment it doesn't quite fit. But that's not a problem now, because next I have to install the bolt with which I can lock the spindle into the hole. One thing for sure, drilling into plastic is fun. And tapping as well. After cutting the slot I removed the threads from one side by drilling a larger hole. And now I can fit the bracket over the spindle and tighten it with the bolt. And that will never come loose. Ok, now with this mounting bracket done, I next need to make this mounting plate that travels along the z-axis and in which this router assembly then can be screwed into. The material I want to use for this is this aluminum plate. Problem with this is it's not perfectly flat, so I have to try to bend it flat again first. Well, that didn't work out as expected, so... Uh, let's just go on and hope for the best. And now comes my favorite part of the build. Once the fun with the hexa was over, I sanded the edges smooth and parallel. Ok, so through various sanding and filing I got the edges smooth and can go on. So next I need to mount this mounting bracket onto the plate. Therefore I'm using two M8 bolts that will screw in like so. With a sharp drill bit, drilling holes in aluminum is also fun and you end up with nice spiral chips. Ok, both holes are drilled and countersunk. Next I need to make the holes with threads into the plastic. I made sure everything lines up and then used the same drill bit to locate the holes. The holes seem to line up, so let's make a test fit. This connection now seems to be really strong and it better should because it has to support this heavy motor. Next I have to drill the holes for the V-wheels into this plate, but the question is where? So to figure this out I slide this block of wood under this chuck and set the other piece with the chuck on the same block so that they are the same height. And now I can clearly see where the holes need to go. And it seems like that this edge of the old mounting plate lines up perfectly with the surface of the new mounting bracket. So this should make it really easy to transfer the holes. But first I need to get access to these holes and therefore I need to take the z-axis apart. Okay, so here's the old piece with the holes. 
and I can just butt it up against my new bracket and transfer the holes into my new plate. Unfortunately, I can't reach all the holes with the drill bit, for example this or this. So for those, I'm just gonna mark on the side where they are supposed to go. The way this whole thing works is there are four of these V wheels and two of them are fixed in place. So they need to be at the exact same distance from this edge here. The other ones don't because they have these eccentric nuts and are adjustable. So to make sure that they have the same distance from the edge, I set up a fence on the drill press, so I drill the first hole and then I can slide it over to the next mark and drill the second hole and that will ensure that they have the same distance. The holes for the adjustable wheels aren't as straightforward as you would think because the round part of this eccentric nut measures something like this, which is a really uncommon measurement. Luckily I had a drill with the right size laying around so they fit. The last thing before I can put it on the CNC is I need to cut it a little bit shorter right here and that means that I can use the hex saw again and I'm so happy about this. And I'm not going to show you this once again. Now I can assemble everything again and see if it works. To align the new spindle and make sure it's square, I installed a drill bit into the chuck and with it I can now look if everything is square. Now one problem that I ran into is that my little crank here doesn't fit anymore because the spindle is so tall. So as a first little project, I think I'm gonna make a new smaller one, but this time just a knob, not a whole crank with a handle like this one. Just for fun, I let a stopwatch run during the milling. And it took it about just under 6 minutes. I think it could go a lot faster, but I first have to get used to this new spindle. Because of this plug of the cord, I can't feed it through the drag chain. So what I'm going to do is just fasten it to the drag chain with some zip ties. And now it's done. And the difference between this spindle and this one is like day and night, really. Take a look. And the reason why this is so much better than this one are pretty simple. So have a look at the shaft of this one. This is a tiny shaft, like 5 or 6 millimeters. So also a tiny bearing. And then the distance from here to the chuck is like way too much for this. This one has a 19 millimeter shaft and dual bearings here. And the distance from the chuck to the bearings is not very much in comparison to this one. It's also much more powerful and can run at slow RPM down to 5000 RPM. It has a nice spindle lock feature and yeah, I guess that's it. But well, this was made for CNC use. It's actually also used for metal cutting. So for wood, this is definitely up to the task. But Inventables, the manufacturer of this machine, also noticed that this is a piece of crap and don't sell it with it anymore and instead with a small trim router, which is a much better choice. The only problem with this middle now is that it could make much deeper cuts than this one, but the rest of the construction is not really up to that task right now. But I also intended to fix that issue pretty soon.